here we go. Part one of the one-two punch, Jason. Sadradim Akhmadov and Steven Danyo, the trainer of Akhmadov. Mark Ramsey said that the one fear they have is of Akhmadov getting lulled to sleep in this fight. But of course, Akhmadov would prefer to put Danyo to sleep were he to have his choice. He would be the first man to do so. And one thing working in Akhmadov's favor here tonight, Jason, a tiny ring. You saw there, Daniel, two steps, and his back was on the ropes. That can only be a good thing for Akhmadov. Yeah, and he's no stranger to small rings. He's fought at the Montreal Casino a number of times. A tiny ring there as well. Uh, he, it really allows him to do what he does best, which is walk these guys down and for, uh, impose his will, really. It's a pretty big height differential between the two as well. Yeah, that was noticeable in the stare down. Daniel does have the advantage when it comes to some measurables. Let's see Sajidan looking to close the distance early here. You know that he's looking to kind of feel out his opponent in the first round, look for weaknesses. They don't need him to explode too quickly. Good left hand there connected from Akhmedov. And that's one of the adjustments that I'm looking for Akhmedov to make in this fight. We've seen him throw a, a rocket of a right hand, really, all throughout his amateur career and throughout his professional career. And we saw a moment ago, after that right hand, he kind of stepped in with that left hand as well. He didn't just stop, and giving Daniel even more to worry about than just trying to neutralize that big sweeping right hand. That's right. I also want to see him hide that a little bit, too. Kind of get these guys used to some lighter shots, throw out your jab a little. Don't just go always looking for that big shot in the leadoff, because eventually you guys are going to catch on to those guys, hey. too. A moment ago, Daniel hey. threw a pretty good flurry there. You have to say, Daniel looking confident here in the opening round. Of course, the, the fear, of course, is that Daniel is going to play spoiler. But right now, Daniel isn't just looking to avoid contact. He's Seem pretty confident in, in letting his combinations run. Yep, he's engaging first here, trying to counter. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. And he definitely looks like he came in great shape as well. You never know with the pandemic or how guys are going to look. He's looking very good. Oh, a second warning here for Akhmedov for those shots behind the head. Daniel pleading his case to the official who agrees with him. So Akhmedov's going to have to be careful here. He doesn't want to get into a hole here in the opening round. Good body shot there from Akhmedov. Akhmedov able to close the distance very quickly and does so in explosive fashion. See some nice defensive skills. Good adjustment from Akhmedov. Beautiful. Just as he ducks in. You can hear Samuel Decari Drolet asking for that left hook to the body as a follow up punch. Punches and bunches is not a problem for Sajudin. He's very good at mixing them up. You see them working in the corner. Of course, English not the first language of Sadrudin, but he said in boxing, you don't need to understand the language to understand what your trainer is saying. He's absolutely right. Uh, and everyone can understand a uh, left hook to the body, and everyone can be affected by the left hook to the body. And I would imagine that's the strategy here as we move into to round three. That Daniel, who is incredibly defensively responsible, is good at pacing himself, not tiring himself out, slowing his, his opponent down. If you could start hitting him to the body, everything goes out the window. Yeah, especially if, since he's going to be looking to take him into the deep rounds. Great point in the last round about slowing the fight down. This is a much slower pace than we're used to seeing out of Sadrudin Akhmedov so far. Uh, it's not to say that that's a bad thing. We'd see a little bit of patience in a young fighter, too. 
Yeah, I actually think that Akhmadov is reacting the right way. You know, he's, he's not frenzied in trying to chase Daniel down right now, and I think he understands, and he even said it prior to the fight, that this is the best fighter that I've faced in my pro career. And these are valuable lessons still for Akhmadov. It is important to note that for as many amateur fights as he had, over 250 amateur fights, the sixth Kazakh fighter to, to ever win a world junior title, the majority of those happened as a junior. So these experiences that he's getting facing grown men who have been fighting in the pros for quite some time are still guys like Arslan Beck Makhmudov as well. These really high-level young fighters, fighters that, that are just coming up, these prospects, it's hard to get their rounds like this. This is, this is exactly what Mark Ranzo wants. Akhmadov thinks maybe he can bait Daniel into a little bit of an exchange here. Daniel briefly meets him forehead to forehead, but that's what you get. If you're going to try and trade with Akhmadov, he gets popped with an uppercut and another one. Sajidin landing some nice shots in this round so far. This is the kind of fight Sajidin wants. He's a consummate entertainer. We've seen him do a little alley shuffle here and there in his past fights. He really wants to give the fans their money's worth. And that was kind of the concern with a guy like Daniel. Will it frustrate Sajidin a little bit too much down the stretch? But so far, this is a, a very good round for him. Good. Left hook to the body. Exactly as Dickery was asking in the corner. And Akhmadov didn't just stop there. He followed it up with a left uppercut that came right up the middle. Final 10 seconds of round three. And you'd have to think that Akhmadov really finding his groove here in the third frame. Daniel coming in with his own WBA uh, Continental Super Welterweight title and the uh, vacant WBC Francophone title, as well as the NABF. We can say what we want as fans about the different belts and different governing bodies, but these things mean a lot to these fighters, and it really means a lot to the future of these fighters, because a win here for Sajidin Akhmedov might get him into that top 15, might edge him in into some of these uh, sanctioning bodies, so it is very important. Yeah, it, it's less about the belts and more about what exactly they trigger in the respective rankings. But right now... That shot caught his attention. It looks like his legs are a little loopy there after that shot. Akhmadov looking for a counter left hook there. Maybe just grazed the chin of Daniel. Akhmadov's got a different look in his eye right now. He does. He's got that hunter look moving in for, for the kill. We've seen it before. He's got to be patient here. Absolutely no rush. It's a 10-round fight. But he did seem to hurt Daniel there earlier in this round. Sadradin is one of those guys who, even in the amateurs, he was mean. He, he destroyed fighters. He didn't just beat fighters. So uh, it wasn't as much of an ordeal to transition him into pro. And you could see that killer instinct come out. That's something I love to see in a young prospect. Akhmadov, you saw a moment ago there, just making good use of the free hand. You know, they were tied up, but one hand was free, and he was able to land a, a pretty good little chopping right hand. Short right hook on the inside. Yeah, he's, uh, he's only got 11 fights right now, but uh, he's a very wise fighter, and he picks up things very quickly. You know, Mark Ramsey has told me that there's times where he sees him in the gym, in the ring, doing something that he hasn't even taught him yet, thinking, how did he do that? But he watches and he picks up. Since he was a kid, he's been watching fighters and trying to take the best. Take a look back at some of the action from round five. There's that big chopping right hand landing from uh, Akhmadov. That's a shot that got him in a little bit of trouble in the first round, but now seems to be landing in a way that is deemed appropriate by the official. Yeah. <laughs>
I mean, like we talked about, Corey, it's somewhat The judgment call, yeah. yeah. It's high, high guard from Sajardin as he looks to close that distance again early in this round number six, second half of the fight. As we mentioned before, he's gone the distance one time. That was his fight in Kazakhstan. His last fight ended in explosive fashion in the uh, seventh round. And so far, Corey, I don't see all too much ring rust after over a year out of the ring. No, and, and he's in there against an opponent who, as we mentioned, fights at a pace that's easy to keep up with. And that's why a fighter like Daniel was chosen by the team behind Akhmadov. Mark Ramsey said he wouldn't mind it if Akhmadov spent the next year fighting guys like Daniel yep. in order to get that experience. Yeah, there's no rush when you have a prospect this young with this much potential. I mean, I know that they're looking to position him into some big fights by the end of next year, but uh, there's definitely a progression that needs to take place in any fighter. We've seen it time and again where a fighter uh, gets rushed uh, beyond his capabilities, and I think they're doing a good job so far. Of course, all things considered with the pandemic, it would have been nice if he could have gotten into the ring another four times in 2020, but uh, let's see here. We're only in January, he's back in. You know, they're looking to hopefully fight him one more time before Ramadan, uh, which is, I believe, coming up around May. But his wife is also pregnant, about to have their first child in uh, just a month, so you never know. The lack of sleep has an effect. Yes. With good right-hand shot. Connects there from Akhmadov. Daniel kind of falling off balance there. That may have been a footwork issue. And there's another right hand. Great and Daniel time. now retreating to the ropes on his own volition. He may be hurt. I think he is, Jason. Dick Harry called a round six or seven stoppage when we were talking. I mean, this looks like that's the direction this is going. Daniel hoping to survive, but he's got another 30 seconds here. Good body shot there from Akhmadov, and you can see the breath that Daniel takes, trying to inhale. He's questioning if he should take a knee. It looked like at one point even that body shot really hurt him. He's looking for any extra air at altitude here in Cuernavaca. As Akhmadov just suffocating him with power shots in the final 10 seconds. Daniel trying to survive in more trouble than we've ever Round nine underway. Sadridina Akhmadov, 11 and 0, 10 knockouts, looking for win number 12. And his first appearance in over a year, taking on Stephen Danio, who is the godson of the great Azuma Nelson, the International huh. Boxing Hall of Famer. So big shoes to fill there. I, I mean. You know, Corey, as Canadian boxing fans, we're lucky to have talent like Sadruddin Akhmadov and some of his fellow Kazakh fighters that I have. The Tiger has signed a couple of really talented Russians as well, and guys like Artem Oganesian and uh, Arslan Bek Makhmadov. It's, it's really fantastic, and it kind of revitalized the, uh, the Canadian scene, just like Butte did, uh, looking to capitalize on that. Well, Danio, in his own small way, is looking to do the very same thing in his homeland of Holland, where uh, there hasn't been a big footprint of boxing, obviously a, a, a tremendous kickboxing nation. However, Danio has started both a management and promotional company and is trying to mentor. To try to be the first man to stop Stephen Danio here. The pace of the fight is definitely slowed. Yeah, it's a tougher task than maybe he would have expected at the end of round six. And 
you know, I do want to correct myself. That wasn't the first time we've seen Daniel hurt before. I think I said that in the moment. As you mentioned, Felix Catch had him in a bit of trouble. I would think that Akwadov had him maybe in a little bit more yeah. trouble, uh, you know, especially where it was in the fight, looking in the second half of the fight. He's wearing down. Mm -hmm. But Daniel, even if he's not winning th these rounds, and, and I would believe that he's not, Akwadov has, has taken almost every round. Yeah. The better version of Daniel has appeared since being hurt. So 10 seconds here of the ninth round. Daniel tries to flurry off the ropes. Making Akhmadov miss there at the end of the round. Making a miss and making him work. And enter the 10th and final round as we listen in once again. Can you finish strong? I want you to give up this fight. Okay? I want you to finish strong. I know they've been asking for that faint in training. That's something that they've been working on a lot. Here is Samuel Dickery asking for it again in the final round. Got to be a little sneaky with that power. Come on, man. Tenth and final round here between Sadradin Akhmadov and Steven Daniel. Akhmadov said he expected for this to be the toughest test of his career. Akhmadov and his camp wanted to see him get this kind of experience and maybe see him get some rounds. They thought maybe he would stop Daniel in the mid to late rounds, but here they are getting valuable experience in the tent. Ultimately, Corey, personally, I feel like experience is more valuable than knockouts uh, for a young prospect. Um, I know obviously you, you want to see the flashy record, but this is the kind of stuff that they've been waiting for for, for his whole career to be able to, to go through, and it's a really good learning experience for Sandra Dan in here. Nice shot. Couple good right hands there, connect by Daniel. There's a good left hook. Akhmadov turning up the intensity here with two minutes remaining in the fight. Daniel goading him on a little bit. Seems to feel confident in his ability to slip those shots, but he is still eating some big ones. Akhmadov finding Daniel with that left hook. Almost more often than he's finding him with that right hand, which has really been his bread and butter to this point in the pros. But Daniel, very good at slipping out of the way of that shot, but Akhmadov has been well trained, knows that's coming, and has been bringing the left hook behind it. That's right. When he's had his best moments in this fight. That ability to adapt in real time, that's uh, such, a, such an important skill for a young fighter to have. Glove out of the way. A lot of a lot of uh, kind of uh, veteran tricks that uh, Akhmadov employs for such a young guy. A little bit of a phone booth here. The final minute of the fight. Akhmadov, you get the sense that he is desperately hunting for this knockout. Kind of letting technique go out the window here. He's just leaning on his power. Daniel hits the canvas, but that will be a rule to slip. Less than 30 seconds left. As we know, Corey, when you're searching for the knockout, sometimes it's the hardest for it to come. It's not hard to find. Excuse me, it's extremely hard to find against this man. Yeah. Steven Daniel. 10 seconds remaining. Akhmadov taking some deep breaths of his own. He threw a lot of punches in this fight. And Daniel will go the distance again, and Akhmadov.
see some of his frantic hunt for a knockout here as we look back at the 10th round. He caught him with some nice shots in that, in that frantic hunt, but uh, Daniel just great chin on him. Again, he's able to just roll his way out of the power a lot of the time. A great chin and great recuperative abilities as yes. well. Because there, yep. there were even moments in this round where he thought, oh, wow, I mean, he's starting to weather, he's yep. getting some flush shots. And then he just, he finds a way yeah. to bide enough time to get out of trouble. Akhmedov looks a little bit disappointed. I mean, he's got nothing to be ashamed of in no, that performance. It's a beautiful performance. To me, he won every round uh, or close to it. Um, and at a good piece of matchmaking yep. to me as well. Yep. Again, especially a guy who's used to, I mean, if, if you have 250 plus amateur fights, you're fighting often. When you're fighting five times a year as a pro in your first year, you're fighting often. To take an entire 13, 14 months off is huge for a young fighter like this. So absolutely nothing to be ashamed of here for, uh, for young Sadrini. You know, it's tempting as a promoter when you have an 11-0 fighter when it's still acceptable to put in opponents that he could easily knock out. You can do that, and, and, it, and it's tempting. You get the highlight reel. You get, you get headlines out of it. But if you're trying to develop a fighter, and if you have a guy in Aquadav who you think you're actually going to fast track, those fights aren't doing him any good at this point. But a fight against a guy like Steven Danio will do far more. Will there be clips on Twitter of this fight tomorrow? Maybe not. But I think that this is a tremendous learning experience and much more valuable than Akhmadov just coming over to Mexico and just starching someone in a handful of rounds. This is an investment that they believe in. And uh, like R Mark Ramsey said, you got a year of Steven Daniels ahead of you until you can get into that position to contend for a title. Very valuable rounds for uh, Sadrudin Akhmadov. And the reality is, too, for a guy like Akhmadov, when you do move up into the even higher levels, into, into the, the world levels, they're Steven Daniel, but they can also hurt you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They have everything that Steven Daniel has, but they're also going to put the pressure on you as well. So yep. you have to learn how to deal with that defensive prowess yep. before you can worry about the more threatening fighters. Daniel and Akhmadov there with a gentlemanly embrace a moment ago. Daniel seems, at least from what I can tell, kind of resigned to uh, what the result is here tonight. Yeah. I don't think we're expecting any drama here in we're the scorecards. the center of the ring to make this one official. Sadradin Akhmedov improves to 12-0 in his professional career. And as you can see, picks up a uh, 